so intense was the heat that all the substances we know now, iron, gold, silver, earth, rocks, water, they were all gases. They were insubstantial, just like our breath. All these substances, all the materials that make up the stars and our earth were fused together in one vast, flaming, hot intensity of light and heat. A heat that would make our sun feel like ice. This raging, fiery cloud of nothingness, too huge to imagine, moved through the immense space. Which had nothing in it, but it was just vaster than the hot, flaming cloud that expanded. This fiery mass at the beginning was no bigger than a drop of water in our vast ocean of space. But that drop contained the earth and all the stars. As this cloud of light and heat moved through the empty space, little drops fell off of it. Just like if you put your finger into a bowl of water and flick it. The countless hosts of stars that shine above us at night those were the droplets that were flung from the immense fiery heat around them. And only instead of just falling and hitting something, they kept floating through space, constantly moving around in such a way that they will never truly all meet again. They are billions of miles from each other. Indeed, some stars are so far from us that it takes billions of years for their light to reach us. Do you know how fast light moves? Do you think it moves 100 miles an hour? 200 miles an hour? How about 1,000 miles an hour? Nope. Much, 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 much faster. It moves 186,000 miles per second. Yep, not per hour, per second. Imagine how fast that is. That means in one second, one point of light can travel seven times around the whole Earth. The Earth is 25,000 miles around its equator. If we had a very special car, a very special car, that could drive at 100 miles per hour all the time and never needed to stop. It could drive day and night. Do you know how long it would take us to travel that 25,000 miles that the Earth's equator is? It would take us 10 days. 10 days to go all the way around, yet the light covers that distance seven times in one second. Let's snap our fingers. Light has gone around the earth seven times like that. Then let's talk about the stars for a second. Do you know how many stars there are in the sky? Scientists have calculated that if each of the stars were just the size of a grain of sand, then all the stars put together could cover the entire country of England to a height of 450 feet. That is taller than the tallest building on Earth. One of these stars, one of these tiny grains of sand, among all of the thousands of grains of sand, is our sun. One millionth part of the grain of sand is our Earth. It is an invisible speck. Now, one wouldn't think that's true because the sun does not look very big, but that is because the sun is very far away. Let's get back into our car, our magical car, that can drive 100 miles per hour and head for the sun. Do you know how long it would take us to get there? It would take us 106 years to drive from the earth to the sun if we didn't stop at all. In fact, the sun is one million times larger than the earth. 
The sun is so big that its flames, even the tiniest flame, could hold 22 of our Earth's. So when the Creator's will called the stars into being, there was no detail that hadn't been planned for. Every scrap of the universe, every speck, which we might think too tiny to matter, was given a set of rules to follow. To the very tiny particles that are like smoke, like a vapor that only could be seen as light and heat, moving at a fantastical speed, the Creator said, as you become cold, you will become closer together. And you will become smaller. And so, as they cooled, they moved more and more slowly, clinging closer and closer together, occupying less and less space. And the particles changed. They weren't all gases. Some became liquids, and even more became solids, which are the three states of matter. And it all depends on how hot or cold something is. Then God gave other instructions too. Each of the tiny little particles was given a special love for certain other particles and a special dislike for others. Some were attracted to each other and some were not. Just like humans, they like some and refuse to have anything to do with others. So they form themselves into different groups. And in this way, the particles combine and form different things that are useful. In the solid state, God has made particles cling so closely together that they are almost impossible to separate. They form a body which will not change shape unless someone applies force. If a piece is broken, the rest of the particles still cling together. Now, when it came to liquids, the Creator said, you shall hold together also, but not so closely. You will have no shape of your own. You will roll over each other. Thus you shall flow and spread and fill every hollow and every crevice in your path. You will push downwards and sideways, but never upwards. That is why, though we can put our hands in water, we cannot put our hands inside of a rock. And to the gases, God said, your particles shall not cling together at all. They can move freely in all the directions. At certain temperatures, some remain solid, some remain liquid, and still others can become gases. And so, while obeying these laws, the blazing mass went on spinning and spinning itself around and around and around, and the sun spun off the world into the tremendous coldness of space. And as time went on, the outer ring of this mass began to dance. It danced the dance of the elements, the particles that were on the outermost edge became cold, and so they shrank, and they huddled together, and they hurried to the earth. But as soon as they approached the hot parts of the earth, they warmed up again. And like little angels, they carried buckets of hot burning coals up into space. And when they fell back down, they returned with buckets of ice. How marvelous, how simple, if you become hot, you expand, and as you expand, you become lighter, and you soar upwards like a bubble of air and water. But if you become cold, you shrink, and you fall, just like a grain of sand falls into the bottom of a pond. And because of this law, the earth gradually changed. It changed from a ball of fire to the earth as we know it. This was the law that the tiny radiant particles obeyed as they danced their dance. Particles too tiny to be seen or even imagined, yet numerous enough to have produced our world. For hundreds, thousands, millions of years, this dance went on. Finally, the particles settled down. They were tired dancers, and one after the other, they first became liquid and then solid. And as they became liquid or solid, some of them joined others, which they were attracted to, and they formed new things, new substances. The heavier ones went nearer to the heart of the earth, and the lighter ones floated above them, like oil floating on water. Eventually, 
a thin scum formed. It was like the skin that forms on milk when it's boiled and then left to cool. It seems as though the earth had taken a shape. But the elements inside the skin were still really hot. And they felt trapped by the skin. And they wanted to get out. What could they do? They could not do anything that had not been set. They had to follow the laws of God. And if you are hot, you expand. And there was no place to expand. So they burst open the thin film. They broke that skin. And it was like a terrible fight. The water that formed on the surface immediately turned into a vapor. And it went up as the hot stuff came out from the inside of the earth. There was also ashes and a veil of cloud was drawn and covered the earth and no one could see what was going on. And the sun was sad for her daughter, the earth. And eventually the fighting ceased and everybody became cool and more and more gases became liquids and more and more liquids became solids, and the earth itself shrank and became wrinkled like a little old apple that has been left too long in the cupboard. And the wrinkles, they're the mountains, and the hollows, they are the oceans. For as the rocks had cooled down, water was able to come to earth, and it rained, and it rained, and the water being liquid filled every hollow and crevice in its path. And thus, the oceans were formed. Above them was the air, the air that we breathe. For the cloud could now disappear. The veil could be withdrawn. And the sun could once again smile upon her beautiful daughter, the earth. Rocks, water, air. Solid liquid gas. Today, as it was billions of years ago, God's laws are obeyed exactly the same way. The world spins around itself and around and around the sun. Today, as it was millions of years ago, the earth and all the elements and compounds that it is made of, as they fulfill their task, whisper with one voice, Creator, thy will be done.